In 2014, Tesla did something unprecedented. They opened all their patents to the world. Most overlooked this move, but one Chinese tech entrepreneur saw an opportunity that would change his life. Inspired by Musk's vision, A. Xiaoping founded Xiaoping Motors. By 2025, Xiaoping grew from a small startup to a major company that now competes with Tesla. He Xiaoping, the founder of a top Chinese electric vehicle company, had no car industry experience before starting his company. Born in Huangxi, he showed interest in technology early. He would take apart electronics to learn how they worked. In 1999, he studied computer science at South China University of Technology. China had less than 9 million internet users then, compared to 1 billion today. After graduating in 2001, he worked at a small software company, while China's internet industry was still developing. Most Chinese tech companies copied Western business models, but he wanted to do more. In 2004, he saw that mobile phones were becoming better. While most Chinese people use desktop computers and internet cafes, he saw a chance in mobile internet that bigger companies missed. He co-founded UC Web that year and created UC Browser for mobile phones. The browser ran well on phones with limited power by compressing data before loading websites. This made pages load faster and used less data, important when mobile data was expensive. As smartphones grew more popular, UC Web kept improving its browser despite competition from bigger companies like Baidu, Tencent, and Alibaba. The company focused on users in developing countries with slower internet. By 2014, UC Web had over 500 million users worldwide and controlled 65% of China's mobile browser market. The company added mobile search, app distribution, and game services. In June 2014, Alibaba bought UC Web for about $4.3 billion, then the largest tech purchase in Chinese history. He Xiaoping became a billionaire at 37 and joined Alibaba as a senior executive. Days after the sale, Elon Musk announced Tesla would open all its patents for others to use. This announcement would lead to He Xiaoping's move from mobile internet to electric vehicles. In June 2014, Elon Musk announced Tesla would release all its patents to the public. Can you open your offer to borrow your patents? Uh, we, we have had a number of inquiries from other car companies and we've told them just go ahead and use them. Mm -hmm. Anyone could use the company's technology in good faith. Most car companies showed little interest in using Tesla's methods. He Xiaoping saw this announcement differently. He had recently bought a Tesla Model S and was impressed by its technology, especially how it could update through software. While many focused on Tesla's battery technology, he was interested in the car's software design. He saw that cars could work as technology platforms, not just transportation machines. China in 2014 had the right conditions for electric vehicles. Cities had severe air pollution, with poor visibility forcing schools to close. The government offered subsidies, tax breaks, and easier license plate rules for EVs. The Chinese car market, though the world's largest, was still dominated by foreign brands. Chinese companies struggled to compete with international manufacturers. The shift to electric vehicles gave local companies a more equal chance. Seeing these factors, Tesla's open patents, China's pollution problems, government support, and the opportunity for domestic brands. He Xiaoping made his first move. In 2014, he invested in an electric vehicle startup while keeping his job at Alibaba. The founding team included people with car industry experience to complement He's technology background. Jia Hing and He Tao were Tsinghua University graduates who had worked on electric vehicle systems. Yang Chun Le had experience from FAW Volkswagen and GAC Toyota. For three years, he worked both at Alibaba and as an investor in the EV startup. In August 2017, he left Alibaba to become chairman at Xiaoping Motors. Many thought this was a risky move since making cars was very different from creating software. He Xiaoping planned to create smart EVs designed for Chinese consumers. His goal was to become the global leader in AI-powered vehicles. The company would build China's Tesla, but with products made for Chinese users. The company name, Xiaoping Motors, used his surname, but also had meaning. 
Zhao means small, and Ping refers to a bird in Chinese mythology that starts small but grows into something large, showing the company's growth plans. Building an electric car company when established automakers have century-long head starts was the challenge facing He Xiao Ping in 2015. Despite his success in software, making vehicles required different skills. Xiao Ping started with a small team in basic facilities. They needed to develop both the physical car and the software systems to make it smart. This required expertise in batteries, motors, AI, and user interface. The company needed large amounts of money. Car development costs hundreds of millions. Zhao Peng planned multiple models with their own technology. Electric vehicles need completely different designs from regular cars, from battery placement to cooling systems. Adding self-driving software made this even more complex. Zhao Peng tackled these problems step by step. They first built a working prototype to show investors what they planned to create. The sample car showed how electric power and smart features would work together. This approach secured backing from major Chinese tech companies. Investors included Alibaba, smartphone maker Xiaomi, manufacturer Foxconn, and IDG Capital. These partners provided money and access to technology, manufacturing help, and supply networks. By 2018, Zhao Ping released its first production vehicle. The G3 SUV was shown at the Consumer Electronics Show in Vegas, a choice that showed Zhao Ping saw itself as a tech company making cars. The G3 offered smart features at prices Chinese middle-class buyers could afford. One key decision set Zhao Ping apart from other EV startups. While others focused on car design and bought technology from suppliers, Zhao Ping created its own driver assistance system and car operating system. This cost more at first but gave Zhao Ping control over the user experience and allowed fast updates based on customer feedback. The focus on technology matched what Chinese consumers wanted. Xiaoping's target market, young, educated city professionals, valued smart features as much as traditional car qualities. By making both hardware and software themselves, Xiaoping created vehicles that worked well with users' digital lives. In 2019, Xiaoping introduced its second model, the P7 sedan, at Shanghai Auto Show. The car featured Xiaoping's self-developed X-Pilot driving system and could travel over 700 kilometers on one charge. In August 2020, Xiaoping went public on the New York Stock Exchange. Despite the global pandemic, the company raised $1.5 billion to fund self-driving research, factories, and charging networks. This IPO was a major achievement. In six years, Xiaoping had grown from an idea to a publicly traded company worth billions. Investors believed in He Xiaoping's strategy of combining hardware and software. Xiaoping grew more visible. It attracted unwanted attention from Tesla, the very company that had inspired its creation. Tesla would soon accuse the Chinese startup of stealing intellectual property. In 2019, Tesla filed a lawsuit that threatened Xiaoping's business. The case involved Guangxi Cao, a former Tesla engineer who joined Xiaoping that year. Tesla claimed Cao downloaded the source code from Tesla's autopilot system before leaving and brought it to Xiaoping. The lawsuit created a public relations problem for Xiaoping. A company that presented itself as an innovator was now accused of copying. For He Xiaoping, this was personally difficult. The company he admired was now calling him a thief. Xiaoping denied doing anything wrong. The company said it knew nothing about Cao's actions and stressed it was developing its own self-driving technology. Xiaoping created strict rules to prevent the use of competitors' technology. Cao later admitted downloading Tesla files but said he never shared them with Xiaoping. The case was settled in 2021. The problem grew when connections were found between Xiaoping and a former Apple employee accused of stealing self-driving secrets. Though Xiaoping wasn't named in the lawsuit, these issues hurt the company's reputation. Xiaoping also faced market problems. The G9 SUV launched in 2022 was confusing, with too many versions and pricing that customers didn't understand. He Xiaoping later admitted mistakes with the G9 launch, pointing to high production costs from extra features and poor marketing. This showed Xiaoping's growing pains as it tried to expand. Supply chain problems after COVID-19 caused more trouble. Xiaoping faced parts shortages and rising costs that delayed production and upset customers. 
the company had trouble getting suppliers to trust it because of its small production scale. Xiaoping also got caught in a price war in the Chinese EV market. Competitors cut prices, forcing Xiaoping to do the same and reduce its profits. For a company still spending heavily on research, this created a difficult balance. A deeper issue became clear. Xiaoping had focused too much on software while overlooking basic car engineering. As a company started by a software entrepreneur, Xiaoping put more effort into digital features than build quality and reliability. Some early cars had quality problems that hurt customer opinion. Seeing the need for change, He Xuaping hired Bing Ying Wang, former vice chairwoman of Great Wall Motor, as president in January 2023. Wang brought decades of car industry experience to complement Hay's technology background. She has filled in an expertise void regarding automobile hardware within the company. He Xiaoping said as Wang began organizing teams and improving operations. Her practical knowledge balanced the company's technology-first approach. Wang's hire showed a major strategy shift, recognizing that successful electronic vehicles need more than good software. They require strong manufacturing, supply chain management, and understanding of customer needs. In October 2024, Xiaoping faced another challenge when ArcelorMittal filed a patent lawsuit that could lead to a sales ban in 18 European countries, creating another problem for global expansion. Despite these setbacks, Xiaoping has shown it can adapt. Under He Xiaoping's leadership, the company has changed its strategy to address new challenges by bringing in car industry experts, improving product development, and continuing to focus on technology. Xiaoping has worked through difficulties while keeping its main vision. Norway was a good testing ground with its high EV sales, which made up over 50% of new cars sold. Though Norway welcomed electric vehicles, Xiaoping faced several problems. European drivers expected different interior quality and driving feel. The company had to adapt to Europe's CCS charging standard. Safety rules and data privacy laws were different across European countries. Building a brand was perhaps the hardest challenge. Most European consumers had never heard of Xiaoping. The company had to build trust while competing against well-known European car makers and Tesla. Despite these problems, Xiaoping did well enough in Norway to expand further. In 2023, the company entered the Netherlands, Sweden, and Denmark. In 2024, Xiaoping announced plans to enter Germany and France two major car markets with demanding buyers. In July 2023, Volkswagen invested $700 million in Xiaoping for a 4.99% stake. This deal was a major success for the Chinese company. The two companies announced plans to develop electric cars together for the Chinese market. This is both for Xiaoping and Volkswagen, a perfect partner because our strengths and weaknesses perfectly match, said Volkswagen CEO Oliver Blum when signing the deal. With this partnership, Xiaoping moved faster with its plans. The company bought Didi's self-driving technology unit for $744 million to improve its autonomous driving systems. By 2024, Xiaoping was selling cars in the United Kingdom and announced plans to enter Poland, Switzerland, the Czech Republic, and Slovakia. This expansion continued despite growing trade tensions between China and Europe. Xiaoping also targeted Southeast Asia focusing on Thailand, Malaysia, Singapore, and Indonesia. Markets where few people own electric vehicles, but car sales are growing. To support this growth, Xiaoping announced plans for factories in Indonesia and possibly Europe. The company also set up research centers in Europe, including one in Germany. Last year, Xiaoping sold about 24,000 vehicles outside China, making up 13% of its total sales. While smaller than other Chinese exporters like Cherry and BYD, Xiaoping quickly became a leader among new Chinese EV brands. Xiaoping plans to launch a new updated model every three months in 2025 and is building charging stations worldwide. He Xiaoping wants the company to be in more than 60 global markets by the end of 2025, with half of total sales coming from outside China. By 2027, the company aims to be among the top three global electric vehicle exporters. He Xiaoping sees the future of transportation as more than just better cars. Xiaoping in the new decade is not just about cars, he said at a company event, showing the company wants to do more than make electric vehicles. 
he considers Xiaoping an AI technology company focused on creating AI models for the physical world. This requires developing technologies that most card companies don't work on. Xiaoping builds core technologies itself instead of buying them from suppliers. Central to this plan is Xiaoping's Turing AI chip, which will start mass production in the second quarter of 2025. This processor is three times more powerful than current card chips, with 750 tops, trillion operations per second. This chip will power Xiaoping's self-driving systems and other AI features. The Turing chip is like upgrading from a calculator to a supercomputer, says He Xiaoping. Through its subsidiary Xiaoping Eret, the company is also developing the Land Aircraft Carrier, a vehicle that combines an electric SUV with a flying module. This solves the problem of where to keep an aircraft. The flying parts fit into the road vehicle, which also charges its batteries. I remember growing up watching science fiction shows with flying cars, He Xiaoping said when showing the product. Now we're making that dream accessible to everyday people. The land aircraft carrier will start production in 2026 and cost about $280,000. He claims anyone can learn to operate the Xiaoping flying cars in just three minutes thanks to simple controls and AI help. Xiaoping is also making humanoid robots. The iron prototype is already being tested in Xiaoping's Guangzhou factory. It is 178 centimeters tall, weighs 70 kilograms, and has 60 joints with camera vision systems. Iron can figure out problems by itself and talk naturally using the same technology that powers Xiaoping's cars. Xiaoping connects all these projects into what it calls an AI tech tree. This strategy combines artificial intelligence, energy solutions, and physical intelligence across cars, robots, and flying cars. Improvements in one area help all products. In August 2024, at Xiaoping's 10th anniversary, the company formally changed its name to Xiaoping AI Automobile Company. He Xiaoping believes the car industry will see major changes soon. The next decade will witness very brutal competition in China. Only five to seven will remain as main brands with 2025 to 2027 being an elimination round. He Xiaoping's technology focus helped Xiaoping stand out in this challenging market. As China's car market faces changes where only a few companies will survive, Xiaoping shows a way forward through its work in AI, vehicles, and robots. This问题实际上困扰了我毕业后很多很多年。我曾经在第一次见、第二次见马老师、马云，在第一次见王建林的时候，我都问了同样的问题：当他们两个人基本上给了我类似的答案，我觉得四个因素。第一个，勤万里路